Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusker here for a special edition of the show. So I'm here with the wines from Spain, wines of Spain. Wines of Spain, right? Uh, from Spain, sorry. Uh, so uh, earlier today I did a little class with uh, about, we did like nine different wines, 10 different grapes, I think it was actually 11. No, actually it was 10, yeah. Anyway, so like nine different grapes. My host is over here. She set everything up for me, Maria. Right, Maria? Yes, yes. yes. So, so I look over there. Um, so a little master class. Uh, we had Devin and June. My my Austin master psalms, not mine. The Austin master psalms here in uh, Austin, and then John. I don't remember John's last name, but he's an Austin wine merchant. You should go there because they have some incredible wines. Um, so I'm here with Nolan Jones. 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 Yeah. See, I remember it was Nolan. Hey, really um, original. Hey, last um, name. <laughs> I'm horrible with names. I took my name tag off, though. Um, anyway, so Nolan Jones, uh, and we've got some cool little wines here. And, uh, yeah, we got yeah, some cool stuff here. So um, I, just, I just went through the whole thing, tasted almost every single wine, and uh, hopefully I'll go back and taste a little bit more. But uh, I stopped by Nolan's table, one of the first tables I went to. We tasted through his wines. Um, so we're going to taste a couple of these again and talk about it. And that's about it. Nolan, introduce yourself, yeah. tell me who you um, are and kind of how you got here. My name is Nolan Jones. I am the trade marketing manager for North America uh, for Raventos Cordonu. So we are an eight winery organization based out of Barcelona, um, but we have wineries uh, across the world. Um, I work in our Napa winery, Artesa. We have a winery in South America called Septima. Um, and then in Spain, we have wineries in Prirat, Rioja, Ribera, um, Penedes. Uh, I think that's everything. So, Cool. So um, what got you into wine? I grew up on a winery. <laughs> Sweet. Now yeah. that's cool. All right. Yeah. yeah. So I grew up in Northern California. Uh, my parents have a winery in the Sierra Foothills. So I grew up in the vineyard. Oh, so, very cool. Yeah. So, um, and what got you with this company? I mean, um, I had been making wine for eight years, um, and wanted to, um, work with an international company, uh, on a different side of the industry. So, okay. um, so now I'm working more on the marketing side, so Very expanding nice. my knowledge base. All right. Yeah. I didn't know this about the winemaking thing. Uh, we'll take a very short side trip. So what, yeah. did, what type of wines did you make? I've made everything from Sauvignon Blanc through port. <laughs> All right. <laughs> everything under the sun that you can grow in California. Very cool. So, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, in these types of events, I don't get really a time to really pre-interview everybody like I normally do. So this is literally, I I, I, I don't know too much. So <laughs> I, know, yeah. I, know his, I know his name is Nolan. He has some cool wines. Um, so... Um, Let's let's talk about the winery that we're we're talking about that we have here right now. Uh, give us a little history about about it. Yeah, so I have two wines here. One is Vigna Pomal, um, mm -hmm. a very traditional Rioja. The other is Raymont, um, kind of a uh, a modern expression of um, the same grapes. Uh, Raymont is the largest or will be the largest organic vineyard in Europe. Um, it's 2,000 hectares, so it's nice. a, a very large property. Um, and then Vigno Pomal um, is a very traditional Rioja producer okay. um, based at uh, the, the parent winery, which is Bodegas Bilbaenas. Um, mm -hmm. But um, the label we're talking about today is Vigno Pomal. Okay. Um, so... Kind of give us, so which, which wine should we start with? Uh, let's start with Raymont. Um, okay. So in terms of profile, Raymont is more accessible. It's more fruit forward. Um, 
it's um, it's definitely a, a food friendly wine, but can be enjoyed on its own. Um, so we can start with that. You want me yeah, to pour it? Let's do that. It's a little pour of that. Yeah. And then... So here's the label. Oh yeah. Um, Actually, let's get a little bit closer. There. That way there's can... the label. Perfect. All right. Um, Sweet. So the, that's what I do at home too. I <laughs> <laughs> the the ethos of the brand really centers around um, the environmental credentials of the the viticulture and winemaking. Okay. Um, so I'll start with the history of the brand. Um, Corda knew uh, the the first winery um, in our eight winery portfolio began in 1551. Um, uh, 400 years later, uh, Cordonu created sparkling wine in Penedes, um, which is in Catalonia, outside of Barcelona. Um, after the success of the sparkling wine, um, they created a second winery called Raymat, about two hours west, northwest, towards the Pyrenees. Um, at the time, the land wasn't being used for any real agricultural purposes, um, but they caught wind that there was going to be irrigation introduced to the region. Um, and if you were to to look at the the landscape, it's really arid. It's it's kind of a high plateau, um, desert like area. You need irrigation to grow grapes successfully. So um, they caught wind that the government was going to be irrigating this land. So they bought two thousand hectares. Um, okay. This was in nineteen oh one, around the turn of the century. Um, since then, the winery has expanded to include a, a range of grapes from Albarino, which you normally don't find in Catalonia or anywhere outside of Reyes Bosches, um, to Tempranillo, to Cabernet, Grenache, um, a handful of grapes. Um, but today we're tasting two Tempranillos, and I wanted to compare our Remont Tempranillo to our Vigna Pomal, our Rioja Tempranillo. So. Okay. So I got the taste this earlier, and like I said, it was one of the first ones I got the taste. So it didn't get lost in like the multitude of wines I just went through. Um, but I like the really the fruit forwardness of this. Yeah. You know, there's there's definitely an approachability to it. Um, you've got some really nice, actually kind of some plum, some blue, purple, and red. You got all the colors of the fruits here. Um, but um, I really like the approachability of this wine. Um, really easy to drink, really food friendly, or just, just drink friendly. I mean, honestly, I can, yeah. I mean, it's, I don't know how hot it's going to be today, but we're in the middle of Texas summer pretty much, and, you know, I can totally just drink this on its own. Yeah. Put a little chill on it. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, really refreshing. Um, and that's, that's kind of uh, the way that these, these wines have been made. If, if you were to, um, to define their, their value, it's a, a really, accessible, expressive, great price um, to quality ratio, everyday wine. Um, we we like the wines to showcase the place um, and the place itself is really unique in Spain and, and really all of Europe in that it is kind of a desert climate with really extremes in temperature um, from hot days to cold nights, um, really cold summers or really cold winters. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the whole environment, along with the, the lack of natural air rainfall during the, the growing season, creates wines that showcase a, a really unique intensity. Um, and so rather than focusing on process, we're really trying to focus on place with this wine. Um, yeah. So, um, and you mentioned this is this is the organically. So this stuff. isn't. Yeah, the vineyard's currently in the process. Well, okay. um, the wines aren't certified, but the the grapes are currently being grown. Okay. Um, so it's a and it's a three year process to get the certification, um, which we we haven't reached yet. So yeah. Um, but the the vineyard will be one hundred percent certified organic in twenty twenty two. So very nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, and. So once that certification happens, is this going to be one of the largest vineyards in, in Europe that will be organic? It will be the largest, yeah, organic yeah. Uh, vineyard in Europe. Um, it's it's contiguous, it's massive, so it's a pretty large undertaking, and okay. um, it's a large financial commitment. But our our values are that um, our you know we've been making wine for centuries, and the best way to continue to do so is to create um, a sustainable uh, farm, a sustainable winemaking, okay. um, a sustainable product. So. Yeah. Um, and 
I know it's not your winery, um, but I mean, it's not, I'm not, I'm not referencing this one. Is this a trend that's happening in that area or is are you guys kind of like the pioneers, the trailblazers of this? Well, traditionally, um, we like to think about our organization as a group of innovators. Um, we like to think of ourselves as the torchbearers for the, um, the process of transitioning to organic viticulture. Um, there are a lot of producers who are creating organic wines, but on the scale that we're doing it, we really like to think of ourselves as pushing the industry towards that um, okay. as the standard method of production. So, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Um, yeah, this is, this is a really nice wine. Um, and uh, we, did we talk about, we're not talking about where I work. But <laughs> which I already talked to Nolan about before. But um, on the retail side, about what would the retail be? Fourteen dollars. Fourteen. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we 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 ha we want this to be accessible. We want it and uh, we want it to be available. Um, it's a, a great everyday wine. Um, like you said, it's enjoyable mm -hmm. with or without food. When it's hot, when it's yeah. cold, it's um, it's a wine that really can be enjoy enjoyed on for any occasion. Um, yeah. It's a fun wine. It's nice. And there's even a little bit of, I mean, there's still, um, I find it's like a kind of a balance of new and old a little bit. Like there's the fruit's really present, but there's still a little bit of earthiness to kind of bring it back into the old world. Um, nice balance. Yeah. It's really easy to drink and uh, it's very enjoyable. Um, shall we move on to yeah, the second one? Yeah, yeah, let's do yeah. that. I'm going to dump this in here real quick. There you go. All right. So, um, both Tempranillos, uh, let me show you this label real quick. Yeah, perfect. So uh, this is from what I think a lot of people would know more about, which is Rioja, um, obviously a much more well-known DO. Um, this is 100% Tempranillo, it's our Reserva, so 18 months in um, American Oak. 100% American oak, 20% uh, new, and then another year in bottle before okay. we release it. So in terms of profile, if you were to contrast this to the wine we just tasted, this is, um, it's got more acid, the tannins are a little rounder, it has a little bit more of an aged character, and the wine itself is, is definitely more appropriate for food, for dinner, um, okay. and for aging. Um, this is a wine you can lay down for 20 years, no problem, and it'll continue to evolve and get better. So for me, this is this has got more of that earthiness, a little more dusty character, a little more of the this the type of stuff in a Rioja that I expect to get out of it. But it's still got a really good amount of fruit. The fruit's ripe. Um, it's not like it's not like just super earthy and just super dusty. I mean, it's, it's got a nice balance between the two. But you definitely taste the dustiness, the earthiness out of it. Um, and <clears throat> you only have the twenty percent on the new oak, so. It's not like overpowering with like that suntan oil. Coconut yeah. Oil. So this is American oak, or just vanilla with just oak. Period. Um, earlier today, we were, we were talking about how um, not everybody is doing the quote classic American oak, 100% American oak. That there's there's a um, uh, a shift. Not every producer is using 100% American oak, but the fact that you just so don't focus on American oak. Like on this one, it's only 20% on new, yeah. so it's not like it's even like just in your face that's American. It's, it's oak aged, and you're getting the aging qualities of it, not really yeah. just like the American side of it. But if you do get oak, and not necessarily Rioja, but like say like Ribetta, where I feel it's a little more fruit forward, a little more international yeah. New World style, um, at least the ones that I've had. No, I'd agree. Um, it's, you're, you're still, it's just, Remember this oak characteristic, not necessarily that it's American. That was one of the takeaways from that from our seminar earlier yeah. today. And that was, that was actually a discussion I had with Devin years ago about real high and American oak. He's like, man, don't don't focus on that. Just focus on everything else that the grape gives you. Yeah. You know, that profile. Don't worry about the American oak thing. You know? Yeah, and really we we don't want the oak to obstruct our uh, presentation mm -hmm. of the quality of the grapes because at the end of the day um, we're the largest landholder uh, around the town of Haro and we want to well we have access to some of the best 
locations in Spain to grow Tempranillo, and we want to showcase that in this wine. So um, we we really want, again, the place to do the communicating. Um, and I obviously, Rioja has very strict classifications based on process, but um, the grapes are the, the core and the heart of what this wine is, and they're, um, they're from some really spectacular vineyards. Yeah, I think that that's, it's coming through on that. You know, you, you, you get the sense of place in the grapes. It's not a process. Yeah. Um, and that was really more for like my fellow songs that focus on that American oak thing. I'm like, it's, it's not the driving force. I mean, yeah, you might use American oak. You might use a combination of other things. You might use French or whatever it is, but you're using oak. And that's really what you're trying to take back. But let the, let the grape come through. Let the sense of place, let the terroir, if you want to, you know, if you will, um, come through on it and I think it's wonderful. Yeah, it's a really beautiful wine. Um, it's $25 and I mean, I don't know if you're gonna find a better value uh, for that price. I was pouring this at the Wine Spectator Grand Tour a couple of weeks ago and I was pouring it next to, you know, wines that were triple that price <laughs> right? and it held up incredibly. So, um, yeah. so it can stand on its own and you can afford to buy it a lot. <laughs> Exactly. In, in quantity, which makes it a really enjoyable wine. Yeah. So, you might have heard the AC turn on. I don't know. I might have been able to knock it out. But uh, <laughs> I. So these these are these microphones are not super like professional, but they're pretty close. I mean, for my purposes. So hopefully they don't get, pick up much of it. But you know, I might be able to get that noise out. Yeah. Um, anyway, no. This has been a wonderful little like experience. We got the chat earlier, so, you know, about wines. Um, I know you gotta get back down there uh, to do that. I also have a couple more interviews to, to knock out here before the event's over. Uh, you have anything else you wanna talk about with the winery? No, the not at all. Yourself? No, no. Yeah. Thank you for tasting the wines with me. It's yeah. wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, all right, folks, so that's gonna do it for this episode. Uh, you can click the links above to friend me up. Uh, click the links below, I'll have links about uh, the wine here. Um, also, um, meant to mention that at the beginning, this is the beginning of twice a week episodes. This is the first episode of twice a week. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ramp up my production here with interviews and wine reviews. So I'm excited about uh, producing way more shows than normal. Um, yeah, and um, that's gonna do it. Uh, thank you everyone, and uh, we'll see everyone again next time. Cheers. All right.